Hello. It's lovely to see you. We're really sorry we can't be with you in school, but we can still do an assembly together. We've got an absolutely great story to tell you, and we've got two songs as well. And we brought someone new to meet you. It's the Reverend Sue. And guess who's here too? Yes, you're right, it's Poppy and Broccoli. We couldn't keep them away. They were desperate to come and see you. Now, our story today is about someone who listened. And it's from the Old Testament part of the Bible. Margaret and Leslie are going to tell the story to us. So shall we all be quiet and still and listen? A long time ago, when God's people had settled in the promised land, they all stopped listening to God. God loved his people and had so many things he wanted to tell them. He wanted to help them, but they had forgotten how to hear his voice. Was it because they hadn't got their ears switched on? You know, you have to switch your ears on to hear if you want to listen. Brock, did you hear what I said? You have to switch your listening ears to hear. Okay, Poppy. Poppy, you are absolutely right. The people didn't hear God because they'd forgotten how to listen. Now, let's listen to the story. God decided to choose to speak to someone, someone who would listen carefully and hear his voice, someone who would tell the people the things that God wanted them to hear. He looked all over the land and searched and searched until eventually he found the right person. God found a little boy and chose to speak to him. A little boy? A little boy who listened. My little brother never listens to what I'm saying. Well, this little boy listened, Brock. His name was Samuel. Samuel lived with Eli the priest. One night, when both Samuel and Eli were fast asleep, a voice woke Samuel. Samuel, Samuel, I want to talk to you. Samuel thought it was Eli calling him, so he jumped out of bed and ran to Eli. Go back to bed, Samuel, said Eli. I didn't call you. So Samuel went back to bed. He hadn't been there long when he heard the voice again. Samuel, Samuel, I want to talk to you. Again, Samuel thought it was Eli calling him and he ran to Eli. No, said Samuel, I didn't call you. Go back to bed, Samuel. Samuel hadn't been back in bed long when he heard the voice calling him for a third time. I know what he did next. He dashed back to Eli as fast as he could. Yes, Poppy, he did. Samuel, uh, Samuel dashed into Eli and said, Eli, did you call me? Samuel, sighed Eli, if we're going to get any sleep tonight, we need to find out who is calling you. The next time you hear the voice, don't come running in here. I, instead, I want you to say, speak, Lord, and I will listen. Samuel's eyes opened wide. You mean, you think it's God who's calling me, he said. Just do as I tell you, said Eli, and then we'll find out. So Samuel went back to bed. He snuggled down and closed his eyes. It wasn't long before he heard the voice again. Samuel, Samuel, I want to talk to you. This time, Samuel stayed in bed. He sat up, listened to what God said with his eyes wide open in wonder. And from that moment, from time to time, until Samuel was an old man, God spoke to him, giving him messages to pass on to the people. And Samuel was always filled with wonder that God should choose to speak to him. 
So God actually spoke to a little boy. Wow, did you hear that, Brock? Yes, of course I did. My ears are still switched on and I am listening. Poppy, do you think God might speak to me? If you listen carefully, Brock, he may well do. Now, that's the end of the first part of our story. Peter's now going to sing a song for us before Leslie tells us the second part of our story. <laughs> Inside out, that the world will see you live in me. Shine from the inside out, that the world will see you live in me. You know me, and you love me, you feel me, so send me to shine from the inside out. That the world will see you live in me shine from the inside out the world will see you live in me shine Inside out, that the world will see you live in me. Shine from the inside out, that the world will see you live in me. Know me, love me, fill me, send me. Know me, love me, fill me, send me. Know me, love me, fill me, send me. To shine. Inside out, the world will see you live in me. Shine from the inside out, let the world will see you live in me. You know me, and you love me, you feel me, so send me. Know me, love me, feel me, send me. Know me, love me, fill me, send me. Know me, love me, fill me, send me. To shine. That was lovely, thank you, Peter. Let's continue our story about Samuel. He grew up into a man, and with God's help, he led God's people. One day, the people asked him for something that made him sad. Everybody else has a king, they said. So why can't we have a king too? Samuel told God about this. God said, Samuel, it's not you they don't want. It's me. I am their true king but sometimes they just can't see it. Tell the people they can have a king if they want, but tell them the truth. Tell them that it won't make their lives any easier. So that's what Samuel did. He told the people, God says you can have a king, but he wants you to know what that will mean. A king will want you to serve him. Your sons will be his soldiers. Your daughters will be his housemaids. And your grain and your gold will be gifts for his special friends. In other words, he will make you his slaves. The people didn't listen to Samuel. They still wanted a king. So Samuel found them one. 
a tall and handsome man called Saul. All went well for a while until Saul stopped listening to Samuel and stopped obeying God. I know what happened next. God told Samuel to find another king. Yes, that's right, Poppy. God spoke to Samuel. Go to Bethlehem. Find a man called Jesse. If the people must have a king, then it should be someone who loves and trusts me. Someone who will follow me. That someone is one of Jesse's sons. I know about Bethlehem. It's where Jesus was born. Yes, Poppy, that's right. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Samuel went to Bethlehem when he saw Jesse's eldest son, Eliab. Samuel was sure that Eliab was the one. But God was sure that Samuel was wrong. And he said, He may be tall, but so was Saul. And remember how that turned out. Then God said something very important to Samuel. You can only see what people look like on the outside. But I can look inside them, deep down into their heart. It's what's in their heart that matters most to me. We've been reading our Bible and I know what happened next. So Samuel moved on to Jesse's other sons while God looked into their hearts. How about the second son, said Samuel. No, try again. The third son? Afraid not. The fourth son? No way. The fifth son? You must be joking. The sixth son? Not a chance. There's only one left, the seventh. You'll have to look harder because he's not the one either. Samuel asked Jesse, have you any more sons? Well, Jesse answered, there's the youngest, but he's only a boy. He's out in the field looking after the sheep. Will you fetch him, please? said Samuel. Quick as you can. When the boy appeared, God spoke. That's the one. His heart is pure and true, and he longs to follow me. So, Samuel poured oil on the head of Jesse's youngest son as a sign that God wanted him to do something special and that one day he would be king. And the name of the young shepherd boy was David. And David was only a boy. Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is amazing, Poppy. And David became the best king Israel ever had. And David was a forefather of the very best king of all, Jesus. Now, that's the end of our story about Samuel. But Reverend Sue is now going to talk to us and say a prayer before Peter sings another song. Hello everyone. I am so disappointed that I still haven't been able to come into school to meet you all. I'm really, really looking forward to the time when I will be able to. Wasn't that a great story? Do you know, actually, it is one of my very favourite stories in the Bible. God loves to speak to us, but like Samuel, we need to learn to listen and to recognise his voice. Why don't we practise that now? Let's be very quiet, very still. Let's ask God to speak to us to tell us something that 
he would like us to do for him. Then be quiet and listen. Mountains are very still. They just sit and sit and sit. They point to your greatness, O oh God, silent and quiet. Help me to be still and silent like a mountain, sitting still, listening to your voice. Amen. May God bless us and keep us in his care. Thank you, everyone. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Fisherman, hey, come follow me. And they did, and they did, and they did. Because Jesus is the King, ruler over everything. Jesus is the one, promised one, the Son of God. Jesus is the Lord, He's the one you can't ignore. Jesus, Jesus he is the King, He is the King. He commanded the evil ones, hey, come out of him. And they did, and they did, and they did. Because Jesus is the king, ruler over everything. Jesus is the one, promised one, the son of God. Jesus is the Lord, he's the one you can't ignore. Jesus, Jesus is the king. He is the king. Commanded the wind and waves, hey, be still, be still. And they did, and they did, and they did. Because Jesus is the King, ruler over everything. Jesus is the one, promise from the Son of God. Jesus is the Lord, He's the one you can't ignore. Jesus, Jesus he is the King, He is the King. He promised that three days after death he'd rise again And he did, and he did, and he did Because Jesus is the King, ruler over everything Jesus is the one, promised one, the Son of God Jesus is the Lord, he's the one you can't ignore Jesus, Jesus, he is the King He is the King he is the king. He is the king. We've really enjoyed telling you this story today about Samuel. And we hope to see you all again soon when we'll tell you another story. So bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>